All right, man, you ready to break down that game? Sure, it's gonna be a little difficult because I couldn't tell who anybody was, but... Oh, because of the... Blue sweater and blue numbers? Get a clue! Let's go! Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs! I guess my brand is a yell and scream... Ah, I don't script these. Are the Leafs all right? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFR. Pity point, puppies, because it's my channel and he doesn't know English! Woo! You're all important points, I'm Leafs! Lose. I haven't said that in a while. Four to three in overtime against the Edmonton Oilers, specifically Connor McDavid. Oh my God. The one encouraging thing about these four games against the Oilers so far is you can shut down Dreisaitl, you can shut down McDavid, but both on the same night, that's pretty hard. And at three on three, that's just goofy. Tyson Berry, the third guy, like, and I help. Well, it was definitely a fun game, but maybe that was part of the problem. Let's talk about it. Just three and a half minutes in, the Oilers are buzzing. A puck squeaks by Freddie. It's right on the line, and me Michael Lettinen swipes it away. But I see the ref doing this and I'm like, ah, I went in! But no, he wasn't pointing at the net, he was pointing at center ice because it meant a penalty shot, which is better but more stressful. You can't put your hand on the puck in the crease. You could swipe at it and people were going, why didn't he just do that? Uh, I don't think he had time, folks. Why didn't he just simply select the best option available? Because he was acting on instinct. You ever catch something before you even realize you dropped it? It's like that. And it's Tyler Ennis getting the penalty shot and I'm just like, should have claimed him on waivers waiting to send tweet. But here's the thing, never tweet. And Tyler Ennis reminded me of that because he didn't score on Freddie Anderson. It's still a tied game, 0-0. I know Mika letting in is on thin ice. He's fighting to even get in the lineup, but absolutely no one should hold that penalty shot against him. He saved a goal. A few minutes later, Leafs trying to apply pressure in the Edmonton zone. Morgan Riley pinching. Puck squirts loose. Leon Dreisaitl breaks out with it, and it's a problem. But it's not that much of a problem because the Leafs have two guys back. The problem is one of the guys going back is Mitch Marner. I don't care how good the forward is, generally speaking, you're gonna have a hard time going one-on-one -on -one with the league's reigning MVP. And Matthews realizes that, but unfortunately, he realized it a little too hard. Because he's coming back like, Mitch, help is on the way! Which is gallant and everything, but as TJ Brody is pointing out right here, uh, there's a guy behind you. And it gets worse, because that guy is Dominic Cahoon and Dreisaitl feeds him the puck. Matthews is so caught off guard that Mitch realizes what's going on, and he jumps into the fray. He gets in there and he actually blocks the first shot, but Matthews is essentially at a standstill. Cahoon gets his own rebound, snipes it past Freddie, and it's a 1-0 lead. Obviously, Matthews is a great player, and overall, I thought he had a great game, but this goal, this is on him. But then again, overall, Cahoon was behind him, and like when the puck got past him, he obviously had no idea he was there. If he's not doing a shoulder check, which as one of his teammates, you can see him not do, someone's got to communicate it to him. Yeah, Brody pointed, but if he's not looking at you, it's not going to help very much. But in an empty arena, you'd hope someone would be like, look behind you! So it's one of those things where individually, I guess it's his fault the most, but defense is a team concept. And for most of the game up to this point, about 11 or 12 minutes in, I didn't think the Leafs looked good at all. Back half of the second period they start to pour it on a little bit more and they get rewarded for it. And this play to me, you gotta go back and watch the whole sequence because it's John Tavares in a nutshell. This team has got so many fun players to watch. Austin Matthews is a fun player to watch. Mitch Marner does fun things. William Nylander does fun things. He's not nearly as flashy, but John Tavares is the little thing king. Look at his impact here. He's drawn three Oilers in here, passes the puck off to Ilya Mikheyev. Meanwhile, William Nylander is a ghost. They don't know he exists. Mikheyev gets the puck but bobbles it and loses it. The Oilers gain control? Nope! Because Captain John Tavares yeah! beasting through the puck battle and manages to knock it loose to Willie and it was at this moment that he knew he pucked up. Willie with the slick hands in tight scores past Miko Koskinen and it's a tie game late in the first. Not taking anything away from Elia Mikheyev. I think he's playing well. He's having a difficult time putting up points. Gets his second point of the season with a secondary assist. Like I said, he's a good player, but and I helped. <laughs> that was all JT, man. Yes, William Nylander with the spectacular move and the very slick goal, but it's John Tavares who put him in that position. He's a funny player to watch because he's not the most fleet of foot, which will talk about later in overtime. And people talk about how that contract is going to age. I've said this a few times, but 
John Tavares has never relied on his speed. That was a criticism of his game going back to when he was 17, playing with the Gens. He'll never be the fastest guy on the ice, but he's got a wicked shot, he's great in front of the net, and he just wins puck battles. I just wanted to make a bigger fuss about that because this team is so fun, and because of it, I feel like Tavares doesn't get enough love. And that would be a great way to head into first intermission, except we can't because the Oilers scored again. With about 15 seconds left in the frame, puck battle in the corner, and another brutal Brutal defensive miscommunication. Hall has a guy in the corner, Riley has a guy in the corner. Engvall has McDavid and then just kind of lets him go. Now Spezza was right in front of the Leafs net so maybe Engvall thought, okay, that's your guy now. Either way, you left the best player in the league just to his own devices. Why? So now he's wide open and has the puck in Wayne Gretzky's office behind the net, which is a bad time. Everybody panics. Josh Archibald is able to sneak past Justin Hall for the wide open pass. McDavid, there it is. Too easy. Archibald bangs it in. It's a 2-1 Oilers lead like that. Now I look at that and I go, why were they closing the period with the fourth line? But at the end of the day, with better communication and decision making and not abandoning the best player in the world, that could have been avoided. I don't know if that was a miscommunication with Spezza or what, but I'm cheering for Engvall. I feel like this whole fan base is cheering for Engvall at what he could be, but the decision making is just, it's a step behind. Now the Leafs try to get it back in the second. And you know how you're not going to get back in the game? Taking a Another offensive zone penalty. William Nylander on this one against Yamamoto. It's a terrible penalty to take. Now, on the power play, I, I was about to say a silly thing. You know what I was about to say? I was about to say, oh, you gotta watch this McDavid goal again. I can say with confidence that if you're watching this video, you've already seen that goal at least 10 times. Well, watch it 11 times then because McDavid, all the dazzling moves, all of that, Watch him though, watch him close. There are two or three penalties committed by the Leafs just trying to stop him and it does nothing. Here's how good McDavid is because it's been documented that Justin Hall is doing a decent job of locking him up. Multiple times in this game, McDavid attacked Jake Muzzin on purpose. What kind of monster intentionally chooses Jake Muzzin as the lesser evil? And in the blink of an eye, he's all alone, end to end rush, snipes it on Freddie Anderson, and this made me laugh out loud. Congratulations to Tyson Berry for his fourth assist of the season on this goal. Really? Well, he did have the puck, and then it was a nifty little drop pass to Connor McDavid. You want to see where he received it? Here it is. Here. Tyson Berry got an assist for passing Connor McDavid the puck here. That's like how I helped my dad shovel the driveway when I was four. Literally taking like a sandcastle bucket of snow from the lawn and dumping it back on the driveway. You're doing great, son. I'm helping! I've got to know how the stats department of different NHL teams handle situations like that. Like, would they see that assist on the score sheet and go, <laughs> No. That is an end-to-end -end rush from Connor McDavid. If it was any more end-to-end, -end, he would have been coming out of the Zamboni doors, and all of a sudden, it's a two-goal, 3-1 lead for the Edmonton Oilers. The good news for the Leafs in this case is the North Division is nothing if not fun. Less than two minutes later, Leafs in the Oilers' zone. Muzzin gets the puck to Marner with space. Marner to Matthews. Holds it. Matthews to Marner. Back to Matthews. Bang! I'm going to explain this as clearly as I can. When Matthews scores on the left, it is called a pew-pew. When he scores on the right, it is a Boom boom, that is a boom boom, and the Leafs are within one. I am a grown up. Okay, so you see the other side of what I was talking about earlier with Tavares, right? Doesn't matter if Matthews and Marner are having the worst or best games of their lives. At any given moment, they're capable of that. And you can show that highlight to anybody in the world. Anybody who's never watched a hockey game in their entire life, and they'd be like, okay, that was pretty fun. I can tell that was good. Who is this team? Do they win the championship often? Oh, uh, they have the second most. Wow! I know, don't tell them. So, the Leafs are within one, and then Barely 30 seconds later, Leon Dreisaitl called for a cross-check on Austin Matthews. What do I say so often? If it affects possession, it's going to get called. This affected possession. When Matthews is in front of the net getting his ribs rearranged, that affects future possession and they don't care about that. But if he gets cross-checked off of the puck in the corner like he was in this case, they're going to call it. So the Leafs head to the power play. The second unit hops over the boards. Mikko Lettinen as the quarterback. Nylander with the puck in the corner actually makes a nice move to get it to Lettinen at the point. Lettinen fires it on. Tipped by John Tavares, leaving Zach Hyman wide open. Uh, Zachary on the attackery ties the game 
like that. Hyman with his second goal of the season. Tavares with his second assist of the game. This one is a tip, which is the most John Tavares thing ever. And Miko Lettinen with the secondary getting his first career NHL point. More on Hyman in the questions portion of this video, but Miko Lettinen, I want to stick on him for a minute because he takes a penalty a few minutes later from Jesse Puyi-Arvi. I didn't agree with it. More on Hyman in the questions section of this video, but I want to stick on Miko Lettinen for a sec. First NHL point, a few minutes later he takes a penalty on Puyi-Arvi, who basically shoved him down, but Lettinen was holding on to him. They're going to call that. Luckily, the Leafs kill it off, but that sort of thing is not going to look good on a guy who's having a difficult time even making the lineup. I'm curious to know what you think. Use the comment box down below. What do you think should happen with Miko Lettinen? Because now, I didn't even know this till this morning, the Leafs don't play until Thursday. Even if Lettinen gets to go in the next game against Vancouver, how is anyone supposed to build up a rhythm here? Is the answer to stay with Dermott? Is the answer to get Lettinen his reps in? Is the answer to trade one of them? I don't think so. I think the answer is this is a great problem, and that means it's not a problem. What? The Leafs have too many useful defensemen. What are they going to do? Sorry, this is why I got to do videos earlier. They just put Tony D'Angelo on waivers? Oh, I need to wrap this up. Today's going to be fun. <laughs> anyway, where was I? I've seen the suggestion that taking Bogosian out of the lineup could help. I think Keefe really, really likes him, and I don't blame him. He's actually been really good. And then you're forcing one of Dermot or Lettinen to play their offside. They can both do it, but Bogosian's a penalty killer too. This is why I'm curious to know what you would do, because I don't really think there's a wrong answer here, and that's a good thing. So we head to the third period. The game is tied 3-3. The Leafs battled back. Darnell Nurse with one of the worst non-calls I've ever seen in my life. He grabs Ilya Mikheyev by the elbow and spins him like a Beyblade. Absolutely no call. And so about a minute later, Yamamoto has to pay the price with the makeup call. And that was the make up of makeup calls. But wow, was the miss call on Mikheyev so bad. Unfortunately, the Leafs can't do anything with it. Koskin and sharper as the game went on. Robbery on Mitch Marner. That was the worst one. Then in the final minute, Leafs are looking good. Leafs are applying pressure. Jake Muzzin blows a tire! Ah! Oilers break away dying seconds of the game! Justin Hall doing his best for Ryan Nugent Hopkins over to Josh Archibald! And this is what a stolen point in the standings looks like. Archibald, maybe not the best shot in the world, but you can only stop the pucks that are flying at you. Frederick Anderson, heroic! And this game is going to overtime. The importance of that save cannot be overstated. In a season where literally every single game is in your division, you're talking about the Oilers getting two points and you getting none in the blink of an eye, or you at least steal one. Freddie quite literally steals one, and now it's overtime. Leafs beginning overtime with Justin Hall on defense, John Tavares, and William Nylander. The Oilers answering back with McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Barry. I saw a few people wondering about the decision to have Justin Hall out there. What? what? He's been flying around covering McDavid all season. The discussion afterwards on Twitter, on the broadcast everywhere, is why not have Matthews and Marner out there against McDavid and Dreisaitl. I agree. I 100% agree, because let's say they cancel each other out and there's no goal there. Then, your next duo is Tavares Nylander! Against who? It doesn't matter! It's not as good as them! Not on paper! Well, who are they throwing out next? Who? Nuge and, like, Yamamoto? That's good! It ain't them. Puyi, RV, and there's no combination the Oilers can throw out if they don't have McDavid and Dreisaitl on the ice that adds up to that. There just isn't. So... That's why I would have went Matthews Marner. But William Nylander with a breakaway at the beginning of overtime shoots, stopped by Koskinen. But if that shot goes in, Sheldon Keefe is a genius. William Nylander is a destroyer of worlds and all is right with the world. But because the shot is stopped, puck goes the other way and William Nylander I thought with a horrible line change. I guess you bail on the play because you figure you're tired and you're not going to catch him and Matthews has a better shot at it, but all night long I'm watching Willie change and I'm like, buddy, can, can you try? That causes Nodman rush the other way, dry sidle with the puck, throws it ahead for McDavid. No other player in the world catches that puck, how far ahead it was, but McDavid is able to pool cue it in past Freddie. Oilers win 2-1. 2-1? One. One. No, they didn't. 4-3. I've made a lot of these, I'm sorry. McDavid with his second goal of the game. Maybe that was the two, but then who was the one? Anyway, I just got it wrong. Speaking of getting it wrong, William Nylander with the goal at the beginning of the game, great. Then he takes a terrible penalty and that line change, I, 
I don't know. I need I need your opinion on that one because I thought it was a bad decision. Now maybe the decision never happens if they start Matthews and Marner. Kevin Bieksa on the broadcast was talking about how maybe the plan was for John Tavares to win the faceoff because he's really good at them and have Justin Hall rag the puck. But it's Connor McDavid. He probably knows that, and he's not just going to let you do it. Anyway, personally, I thought that storyline was overblown. If Nylander scores the OT winner, none of us are talking about that. I just hated the decision for the line change. I didn't think it was well executed at all. <sighs> Questions. What are your thoughts on the whole ref situation recently? I'm so very confused. Uh, you and me both. And this isn't a case of the Leafs getting jobbed. It wasn't last game. It wasn't this game. There was the horrible one on Mikheyev. But then, like, McDavid could have a penalty drawn every shift. I don't know if it said the refs do a bad job. I think it's that they have an impossible job. It's obviously impossible. None of them can do it properly, right? That's that's the perception. They're gonna miss stuff. They are. It's the stuff they're looking right at, though, that they miss that drives you nuts. The McKay have won. What? What else do you want? He's, it's right there! Right there! It's not that refing is the problem, it's that there's a problem with refing. Who would you have started in OT? <laughs> I still say Matthews and Marner, but I mean, you can mix and match in three on three. It's not the same as five on five. You could have had Tavares and Marner and had maybe a different result, and then throw out Matthews and Willie as your second group, that's fun. Imagine starting with Tavares off the face-off, and you have Marner out there, and you have Hall. The next unit over the boards is Matthews, Nylander, and Riley? Again, I, I think that storyline's a little overblown. I just didn't like the line change. I didn't. And that's half of three on three. It's decision making with when you go for a change. Nothing against Lettinen, but if these performances continue, do you see him being able to justify a spot over Dermot or even Sandine? Yeah, definitely nothing against Lettinen or Dermot, but uh, Sandine has to get a game in, doesn't he? This is going to be such a problem going forward, and it's not just the Leafs. There's all these teams with all these amazing prospects who, when next year comes around, will have not played hockey for like a year, a year and a half. How are any of them supposed to get better? Any of them. They might be better at certain stuff. They might be faster and stronger because they're like working out and stuff. But how is a guy like Sandine supposed to get better without playing games? Like, are they just waiting until the AHL comes back? Is that it? I don't know. At the end of the day, it's not a crisis. They're seven, two and one. That's pretty good. But I am i don't know how they get, I don't know how they settle the Dermot Lettinen thing, let alone yeah, Rasmus Sandin exists. Any idea why Hyman and Muzzin rocked the A's tonight? Not that I have anything against it. I thought Matthews Marner rotated and Riley was a full-timer. Well, you're right about that arrangement. Riley is a full-time assistant captain and Matthews and Marner rotate. I think this was the Leafs taking an opportunity. They don't always wear these jerseys. It was the first time they ever wore these jerseys. It was them giving an opportunity to Hyman and Muzzin, who really deserve it, to wear a letter. Because after the Kachuk incident from earlier in the week, I saw a lot of people going, oh, make Muzzin the captain just for a game. Hyman has been a leader on and off the ice for this organization for over half a decade now. How time flies. Even as a young guy, he was like a leader amongst the young guys. The organization loves him and he loves the organization and they slap an A on his chest and he scores the very same game. It was nothing against Matthews and Marner and Riley. It was just the team awarding two guys who really, really deserve it. And it felt good to see. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell your friends. Remember, there's no Leaf game until Thursday, which means I'm sure there's going to be some goofy stuff going on. You just know it. You just know it.